Welcome to an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Well, it's the Monday after Thanksgiving, so go make a turkey sandwich and enjoy our show. Scott Craigie has the rundown. And we are going to put Senator Ensign on the hot seat. We're going to talk to him about some of the issues and accountability as he heads into his election year cycle. We will talk to him about October 12th, which is the day when the um, debt clock ran up to $8 trillion. In fact, during the half hour that we do this show, the debt will grow by $64 million. I think that's more money than Sam Shad makes in this half hour. We'll also talk to him about the conduct of the war and what's happening in the state and why it is we're not able to get a balanced budget from a Republican House, Senate, and President. And our Power Pundit panel today, John Gwaltney, Ernie Adler, and Anne Jeanette Damon, coming up on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. High-tech companies demand perfect world amenities. They require clean, reliable power, state-of-the-art fiber optic communications, and clean water sources. In a perfect world, companies would have immediate access to rail and interstate freeways. There would be four-lane expressways that shorten shipping times and provide convenient commute routes for valued employees. Well, the future is now, and it's here. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevada. The resort at Red Hawk offers you two great dining choices. Experience David's Grill and Sports Bar or the Steakhouse at Red Hawk. The Steakhouse has received the Wine Spectator Award of Excellence based on a diverse selection of fine wines. To accompany the wines, the Steakhouse serves certified Angus beef steaks in a variety of cuts, fresh fish, chicken, and pasta dishes. For fun and casual dining, come to David's Grill and Sports Bar. David's is open seven days a week, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The resort at Red Hawk. Always the right choice. As an employer, did you know you can be held liable for negligent hiring? A background screening by Employer Links can uncover criminal records like alcohol and drug convictions. It can verify the applicant's education, driving records, and professional licenses. Employer Links can check civil records, registered sex offender records, and social security fraud. Hiring the right person shouldn't be a gamble. Call Employer Links. Employer Links, protecting your investment. My family started this business 27 years ago. We work hard to serve our customers and our community. But it's getting harder and harder to keep the doors open. For example, our workers' comp is going through the roof. Isn't anyone on my side anymore? The Retail Association of Nevada is. If you're a small business owner, we can cut your workers' comp by up to 50%, lobby for your interests, and keep you informed. Put us to work today. watching Nevada Newsmaker. Well, good morning. We are joined today by Senator Ensign. Thanks for coming on today. And I'm going to let Scott kick it off. Good morning. Well, we'll kick it off with what we talked about, I guess, in the open. In fact, we're going to show the number. If we can show the national debt number, if you take a look at that, $8 trillion. That's what an $8 trillion debt number looks like. That's as of this morning sometime. Um, obviously, it's grown significantly since the Republican House, Senate, and presidency, um, that's obviously an issue people are going to be asking about during the campaign. I think it's a significant issue, and, and, uh, and I think uh, Republicans and Democrats are to blame. Uh, certainly Republicans are in control, and, and they have to take the, the share of the blame. Uh, I think that we are spending money way too fast. That's why I've been one of the people trying to bring spending down. Uh, I've joined with a group of seven senators, uh, myself and John McCain and five others. Uh, we're going to be offering $125 billion worth of uh, spending cuts uh, this uh, when we come back in December. Hopefully we, that's when we will have uh, uh, the opportunity to offer an amendment on a bill uh, to see whether people really want to stand up and, uh, and not pass this huge debt on to our children. Uh, 
Republicans, Democrats both get reelected by giving money away to people. And, you know, there are a lot of laudable programs out there, but we, we need to start living within our means. It was understandable. We went to war. It's understandable to have a deficit when you go into war. It's understandable during a recession. Okay, but uh, right now we've come out of the recession. Uh, the, the war obviously is still there, very expensive. Uh, but there are other places we need to tighten our belts. And we're going to offer specific proposals for people to vote on. The sad fact is we'll be lucky to probably get 20 votes. Uh, that means Republicans and Democrats will be voting against those, those spending cuts. The only hypocrisy that there really is here, and, and uh, you, can, you can blame Republicans because we've been in charge, but the Democrats are trying to say that they're fiscally responsible, yet they keep offering amendments that would increase the debt even further and faster. And, and, uh, and so while I take our party's responsibility for the debt, for the Democrats to then try to be the party of fiscal responsibility, I think is very disingenuous. Well, it was interesting that last week, the, or two weeks ago, I guess it was now, the story of how you guys were trying to cut um, future spending, essentially stopping the increases of 50, I think it was $50 million. $50 for the, billion. For the $50 billion for it was HUD and various other things. Yes. And you guys got criticized for trying to lower well, spending. Just on Medicaid, for instance, just to show you how difficult it is to slow spending growth down. Not even cutting spending, just slowing the rate of growth down. The Medicaid package, we, the originally the president sent up a, uh, a budget that would have cut the rate of growth from 40% increase over the next five years to 39% increase. Okay, so just a 1% slowing of the rate of growth. Wow. Could not get the votes in the United States Senate. We had every re Republican except for uh, six, and uh, since we only have 55, we couldn't get the 50 uh, the 50 votes. No, no Democrats would vote for that, and it's and it's really a shame. That just goes to show you, it's not even a cut. What you're trying to do is just rein in the rate of growth a little bit. As the economy grows, that'll actually that's what we did during the 1990s. Is we just slowed the rate of growth of spending down, and. Uh, and during that time, the economy grew, and the, the tax revenues then ended up producing some well, surpluses. Well, in those years in the 90s were when Clinton was president, and, and, and Clinton was able to work with the Republican leadership in the two houses and actually got a balanced budget. And a balanced budget, as I understand it, I'm not an expert in this area, um, the balanced budget is really the first step toward attacking the, the deficit. Um, when, when will we see a balanced budget out of this Congress? Well, the... Uh, uh, I, I mean, I don't think we're going to see that in any any time in the near future. The the goal is within the next five years is to cut the How deficit. How much of that owes to the president? Is, How much of that owes to the to the uh, houses? Well, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of blame uh, to go around. Uh, the, the one place I, I've supported President Bush on a lot of different proposals. The one place that I have disagreed with him is on the uh, fiscal end. Uh, uh, the the new prescription drug bill. We could have done that. We could have helped those seniors who truly needed the help, without dramatically expanding this hugely expensive program. Uh, the president uh, has, has, a, uh, has his bill that got enacted into law. It is going to massively increase the national debt. Uh, you know, the Democrats criticized that, but their bill was twice as expensive. Uh, I had a bill that actually wouldn't even have hardly cost half of what the current bill costs. And, and, but it, yet, it would have helped those seniors who truly sometimes have to tru choose between prescription drugs and rent. Uh, it would have done it in a, in a way that was much more responsible to the next generation. We could have shown that compassion while still being fiscally responsible. What is your prediction for how things can change? And I know it's tougher in an election year, but do you think there's something you can do that the Senate can do to hold down spending? Well, Katrina, as bad as it was, shed the light on how out of control federal spending is and has actually given us some momentum. Uh, uh, the Republican chairman of the uh, Senate Appropriations Committee uh, is talking about doing a rescissions package, a, a basically a deficit reduction package, uh, looking for for areas to cut. Well, appropriators, uh, the one thing that people have to realize is that that people who aren't associated with politics don't understand that appropriators love to spend money. That's just something that they love to do. It's it's the Appropriations Committee. They're in charge of of spending the money, and it's just something that's I don't know, Republicans and Democrats. There, there's a saying there, Republicans. Democrats and then their appropriators, uh, they, they love to spend money. And for the chairman of the Appropriations Committee to talk about deficit reduction and, and actual true spending cuts is almost historic. And so I'm looking forward to uh, Thad Cochran. He's from Mississippi. I'm looking forward to uh, some of the proposals that he will bring forward. And with his leadership, maybe we can 
finally get our fiscal house in order. Good. We'll be right back with more of Senator Ensign right after this. For a videotaped copy of any Nevada Newsmakers program, call 775-857-2244. The tapes are $20 each, including shipping. For more than a decade, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has been helping the community embrace conservation as a way of life. That includes replacing more than 50 million square feet of grass with water-smart landscaping. During the worst drought on record, watering restrictions and tough landscaping codes have reduced the community's water use by billions of gallons, even as thousands of new residents were moving into Nevada. That's smart water management, and that's our promise to Nevada. The soul of Vegas was conceived on Fremont Street, and we've stayed true to our roots. Fabulous dining and free entertainment. Topped off by Viva Vision, the biggest big screen on the planet. With free, spectacular animated light and sound shows every night of the year. Party downtown on the street that started it all. The Fremont Street Experience. It's over-the-top vintage Vegas, baby. If you pay for your communication and entertainment services separately, you could be paying too much. Unlike cable, SBC let me build a plan to fit in my life at a cost that worked for me. With cable, I couldn't get the services I wanted the way I wanted them. The SBC family gives you more choices like the proven reliability of SBC local and long distance service, digital satellite TV, and high speed internet. All for under 80 bucks a month. Add singular wireless and the savings just get better. Call or go online now. SBC, now joined with AT&T. To an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers. And we're back with Senator Ensign, and I'm going to let Scott take the lead again. You know, I saw Senator Domenici quoted in uh, actually the state's newspapers as saying that Yucca Mountain's not going to happen and indicating we're going to have to find another alternative. Now, he's the chairman of the Senate Energy Committee. Is there some, some possibility that Yucca's in serious trouble? I think Yucca is in serious trouble. I've been saying that for some time. Uh, with all of the problems that have been going on at Yucca Mountain, with the, with the science, with the emails, with all of the various problems, uh, the Department of Energy has all of a sudden changed course. They, they're even saying that they have to build it differently. Uh, it's too expensive. Uh, you have to transport this stuff all, all over the country to a, to a place that is going to be too expensive. And by the way, if we build Yucca Mountain, let's just say that we built it, it only will house the nuclear waste that we currently have. Yeah. None of, you will need a second Yucca Mountain someplace uh, to be built for the nuclear waste that will be produced into the future. That's why we have to look at other alternatives. And Senator Domenici finally coming to that conclusion. Because he was a very big advocate. Huge yeah. advocate yeah. for yeah. Yucca Mountain. We've been fighting him for years. And uh, Senator Reed and I have been working on him for a long time. And, and for him to finally realize, I think, the reality of the situation. Uh, they're still putting some money, although we were able to cut almost in half the amount of money for uh, Yucca Mountain versus what was requested by the administration and the Department of Energy. Uh, uh, there's still some money being appropriated for that, but I think that in the end, uh, my prediction is is that it, Yucca Mountain has a lot of trouble ahead for ever being completed. Well, this passed in the 1970s when the nuclear industry made a lot of promises to the government about pretty much you know, free, cheap, uh, very affordable power, and yet they never really came through with that. And this is the only industry where we're taking care of their waste. Why not turn the tables even more? I was glad to see in that article that, they, that Congress put in $50 million for reprocessing technology. Why not go further and say, you know what, guys? You create the problem. You take care of your own waste. And they'll probably make money out of doing it and do something that's better than what Department of Energy, as a former Department of Energy employee, I can understand. They can't do this. I, right. I've always felt that. Well, there, the, the, the problem is is that the government won't let them, and okay. that, is, that has been the problem. Uh, Jimmy Carter stopped us from doing reprocessing back in the 70s, uh, and we've continued that, that, uh, that policy ever since. Uh, 
it is uh, France and Great Britain currently are reprocessing, have been doing it for years. Seventy percent of France's power comes from nuclear energy. Uh, there are no greenhouse gases for nuclear energy. If done right, nuclear energy is very good for the future of the United States. Uh, it's, it should become an increasing uh, part of our energy supply if you could take care of the waste. The problem is is that just building a huge hole in the ground to put the waste in is not the solution because of the expense involved and you're wasting valuable energy. There's Our nuclear power plants only take out a small percentage of the energy. We need to recycle that waste, invest in the technologies to recycle it instead of investing in Yucca Mountain. Well, it's nice to see that the Congress is starting to put a little more emphasis on It's only on starting. We've still got a long way yeah. to go. Let's so emphasize let's that. Let's turn to the war in Iraq. Uh, you have to ask the question, is the uh, uh, involvement of the American government and the American war effort uh, in Iraq um, feeding the insurgency or stopping the insurgency? You know, you gotta, it, it looks well, as if we're creating our own terrorist enemy for decades to come. No, there is no question that America in Iraq, Americans in Iraq, uh, we, we can never win that insurgency war as currently uh, as we are currently there. That's why the proper role of our military is to train the Iraqis to defend their own country. And that's exactly what we're doing. That has been the plan. You know, people say, well, you have to have a plan. There's been a plan in place. They come and brief the Congress on it uh, periodically. We have briefings all the time. Some of them are classified. Some of them are not classified. And... Uh, uh, the progress is being made. If you talk to the troops on the on the ground, I just read an article uh, from a, a former Marine whose son is over there right now uh, on all of the what is working, what isn't working, and the and the thing that that surprises most people when you talk to the troops, whether they're soldiers or Marines who are on the ground over there, they say the same thing consistently. It's going much better over there than what we see on the news. Much better. Iraqis are being trained. They still have a long way to go, but they are being trained. Uh, I think that what the administration has been saying for the last year is sometime in 06 we'll be able to do a fairly substantial uh, drawdown of our troops, but we won't be completely out of there for, for probably at least some several years. Uh, but as the Iraqis pick up more of the slack, pick up more of the defense of their own country, we'll be able to bring more and more of our troops home. It is absolutely essential, though, that we complete what we set out to do. Because if we pull out now, uh, the insurgents, the terrorists from around the world, they looked at us, what we did uh, in, in several places in, in the world, including Vietnam, including Somalia, including other places where it looked like, a, you know, if you just get stay tough and hang tough with the Americans, they'll cut and run after a while. Right. Well, if we do that in Iraq, it will just embolden the terrorists. And remember, People say that we're creating this problem. We did not ask for this problem in 1983 with the Marine Barracks in Beirut. We did not ask for this problem with the first uh, World Trade Centers were bombed, or, or the Cobart Towers, or the USS Cole, or obviously uh, on September 11th. We did not create that problem. That problem came to us. There is an enemy out there that is so evil in the world and we have to confront that enemy and if we don't recognize what that enemy is they're going to continue to come to our shores and attack us here and that's why taking the fight to them was I believe the right move. Well, we're going to have to leave it at that but we hope you'll come back again and chat with us some more. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. for joining us. We'll be right back with our Power Pundit panel. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Here at the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, water resources come from fresh, clean groundwater, approved by state permits. The water is pumped from wells to million-gallon storage tanks and then distributed to TRI companies. Another amenity is our investment in a state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant. This disposal system converts waste to clean water for industrial applications. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevada. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers encourages the responsible consumption of beer. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association are sponsors and participants in many community-based efforts such as school education programs, safe ride home, recycling programs, alcohol-free after-prom and graduation parties, safe voting campaigns, and designated driver programs. They are family-owned businesses employing 2,000 Nevadans. They also collect and pay the state excise tax. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association, delivering more than just beer. 
The resort at Red Hawk offers you two great dining choices. Experience David's Grill and Sports Bar or the Steakhouse at Red Hawk. The Steakhouse has received the Wine Spectator Award of Excellence based on a diverse selection of fine wines. To accompany the wines, the Steakhouse serves certified Angus beef steaks in a variety of cuts, fresh fish, chicken, and pasta dishes. For fun and casual dining, come to David's Grill and Sports Bar. David's is open seven days a week, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The resort at Red Hawk. Always the right choice. Since its creation more than a decade ago, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has focused on three goals. Preserving water quality, improving water conservation in Southern Nevada, and meeting the community's current and future water needs. Through thoughtful planning, responsible management, and collaboration, it's succeeding. As we move into the 21st century, the authority continues to embrace sustainable water development and efficient water use. That's our promise to Nevada. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers. And we're back with our Power Pundit panel. Say that three times fast. Mm -hmm. Gary, yeah. Three okay. times fast. <laughs> John Gwaltney with the State Board of Education. Hi. And Jeanette Damon, the State House reporter for the Reno Gazette. Hello. And Ernie Adder, form, former senator from uh, Carson City. So, what do you guys think about uh, Senator Ensign, especially uh, the debt, between the debt and the war? Some good points well, there? Or? I, think, I think he made some very good points, but I... I still don't think you can conduct a war and still have some of the biggest tax cuts in history. I think you need to suspend the tax cuts and say we're serious about paying for this war and not putting our future generations into debt. I mean, you can't, you can't have both. Okay. As he runs for, for re-election, he's going to have to walk that fine line between providing projects for his district, which he was happy to do. He, he came to Reno and Las Vegas and celebrated several huge transportation projects that he helped secure funding for for Nevada and then also answering these criticisms that we heard on this show about um, skyrocketing spending deficits that increase even though um, the name of the bill is the Deficit Reduction Act so it'll be interesting to see him walk that line. Mm -hmm. Well, I make my living as an economist, and so the question of the deficit is a particularly fascinating issue to me. Number one, I, I think he was absolutely correct that most of the deficits that has been built over a period of military activity or for an economic contraction. You put those two together, why you have, you have an excuse for a sizable increase in the deficit. However, the problem at this point is we're close to full employment. We are looking around the corner at the potential of inflation and the deficit could easily trigger a very serious cycle in the economy. So I'm glad to hear that he and other senators are looking at how to rein that in. I'm not terribly interested in the question of the size of the deficit. I'm more interested in the question of the timing of it currently. Right. You know, one of the interesting things about Senator Ensign is that this leadership role that he's, he's earned, I guess, or, or gotten achieved during the, um, the years that he's been in his first term. In the next term, assuming that he wins re-election and he goes back to the Senate, um, he's expected to be the fourth or fifth ranking member of the, the Republican caucus in the U.S. Senate, along with Harry Reid. I'm, I'm not sure, you can go back probably to uh, Senator Cannon and some others, but we may never have had um, a, a level of influence in our past that um, these two gentlemen together may have in the U.S. Senate. It's, it is remarkable. Well, there's no question at this point that Nevada population-wise means a great deal more than being a New Yorker or a Californian. Uh, the, the clout that these two gentlemen will have could serve Nevada very well in the future. Yucca Mountain is an example of that. It may be going away more because of our clout than the science, to be blunt about it. Yeah, that's very true. How about the caucus, the idea that uh, the, de the Democrats are now looking at Nevada as a potential early caucus site? Ernie, does that make sense to you? I, I think that would be wonderful. I think it would energize the Democratic Party. I think it would uh, bring a lot of attention to the state of Nevada and make us much more important politically. And um, I think it'd be great. It'd certainly be great for the news media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm hoping. Get that caucus here early. It would be fun to cover, definitely. It's a very exciting time for Nevada politically. I mean, that started in 2004 with the battleground state status that we had. Tremendous attention from both parties, presidential candidates, their wives, vice presidential candidates. That would only increase exponentially if, if there was an early caucus in the state. So hopefully there's some attention being brought to that. Well, and John, uh, caucuses actually are the best way to yeah. organize the, the party as well. It's not just a matter of you getting everyone fired up. The, the, frankly, in Washington, they're about as fired up as they get. Right. Um, 
But that would organizationally be huge, wouldn't it? I think so. I, and, and I would say, I think I'm a registered Republican. I want to make that clear as I start. <laughs> I think this is a great time to be a Democrat, which is an interesting approach to what I'm about to say. But I think the fact of the matter is this administration has been the poorest that I've seen in my life of watching presidents of explaining what they're trying to accomplish. I don't necessarily disagree with most of what ha has been said, both on the war and also on the, on the question of the economy. I disagree profoundly with how well they have tried to express it. I don't think they've made their case to the public, and I think the Democrats are chopping at the bet, and they ought to be. You know, I think uh, Senator Ensign's comments on the war were much better than anything I've heard from the administration. You know, I, thought I mean, too. honestly, I mean, I, I, I think you're wrong. He makes a good defense. Yeah. He, he really made does. an excellent defense. And I mean, I share John as a Republican out there, too. You know, we do get criticized a lot. We're looked at as, you know, how can you support your president? And there are a lot of good things going on, and yet the stuff that the media has covered has, I think, really focused on the negative in the sense of where's the Social Security chain? Remember the, all this hoopla yeah. about the Social Security that it suddenly died? No, it's still going on. It's just it's not getting the media attention that it got before. And I agree that it's, it's a tough time to be a Republican because we're trying to defend a, an administration that's getting a lot of criticism. Really and in some ways valid criticism, but in a lot of ways not valid criticism. In dealing with the war issue, there was no question that an effort to establish a democracy in the Middle East, which was capable of confronting the most radical of the Muslim element, I think, had a very, very noble cause. But that's not what they but sold it on. They but, never sold it on. But yeah. academically, that's where it was going. Yeah. And, and I, I disagree with the effort to sell it on, on weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. I do agree with the effort to try to sell a democracy in the Middle East. I think that made yeah. sense. But, but nobody sold it on the right issue. Right. Well, I that's a paradigm right. shift right. that I think most yeah. people would support if they knew about it. If so they understood. We're going to have to leave it at that. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with more tomorrow.